The new exotic ship A Thousand Wings details power in the Destiny universe through the word Demiurge. This is a being responsible for the creation of the universe in particular. In one of the latest videos here on my channel, we talked about the Traveler's creator alongside it being a Demiurge itself. So you can check that out if you'd like, but today we're diving deeper behind Ulantan's theories on dark and light, and what it truly means to be on either side. So definitely going to be an interesting video. My name's Evade, and welcome to Destiny Guides. Only those the Traveler chooses will be reborn in the light. The Traveler will choose me, Speaker. And you are going to tell me how. In Ghost Fragment The City Age, the faction known as the Concordat is in the process of being removed from the city and the Consensus. For those of you wondering what the Concordat is, this is the faction whose flags are seen scattered throughout Bannerfall in Destiny 1 and 2, the green logo with the fist. And so it is agreed. The Concordat shall no longer be recognized among the Consensus. We'll begin the dismantling right away. But what of the Guardians who pledged to them? We can't afford any more banishments. I'm sure Zavala can see to their realignment. We'll do our best. Lysander chose his followers wisely. It may take some time. Lysander will not back down. He'll continue his crusade from wherever we stuff him. And so we need to find new ideas to replace his. The symmetry has been gaining a strong following. Ulantan's teachings are too dangerous. Too much fear. Who knew he'd be more troubled dead than alive? We need to refocus our collective minds on combat. The speaker's anxious to regain ground we lost after the gap. And that's the end of the important information from that card. So who is Ulantan and why were his teachings so important? Ulantan was a warlock who led a faction called Symmetry. This faction believed that the darkness was a necessary symmetry to the Traveler in the cosmic balance, and also that all the light was interconnected across space and time. Now that last part there about space and time can be seen uh, in a Grimoire card from the Chamber of Night. Ikora says, Your discovery is perhaps the greatest of our time. If the Hive were able to inflict the Traveler through this long lost shard of its battered shell, Ulantan's theory may be true. All light remains connected across space and time. We cannot let our enemies use this power against us. What is this thing? It's a shard of the Traveler. They were using it against the Traveler, devouring its light. But we freed it. Our new friend said there are enemies on Venus worse than this. Great. So the whole situation with the faction story is actually pretty cool, something I didn't know until reading some of these cards. Now I knew that Ulantan had all these theories on the light and the dark, but not that he led his own faction who held similar beliefs. So in that first card, the symmetry is brought up as a replacement for the Concordat faction that is going out the door, but it seems that Future War Call would ultimately take over the spot and get that place in the tower which we know from Destiny 1. Surrounding Ulantan though is a cloud of mystery, and a pretty good example of this is the Darkness Grimoire card from the first game. Now we all know that the darkness could be anything at this point and it's just a giant mystery so there's many theories and we haven't seen much in the game as I'm sure you're aware of but let's go ahead and listen to this card which states a bunch of different theories from in-game characters and what the darkness may be. Something hit us, killed our golden age, and nearly wiped us out. Only the traveler saved us and at a shattering cost. The speaker tells of a cosmic force that swept over us and caused the collapse. Legend calls it the Darkness, the Traveler's ancient enemy which hunted it across space. All we have left are questions. Centuries of debate gave birth to competing arguments of the nature of the Darkness and what the Collapse was. The Pujari position describes the Darkness as a force with both physical and moral presence, an actualization of evil. Pujari art depicts the darkness as a great storm, or as a change in conduct, a corruption that emerged from within and poisoned the Golden Age. Saint-14's position argues that the darkness was an invading armada, an alien force of incredible but tangible power. Some adherents believe this armada sprang from a species rejected or discarded by the Traveler for their sins. 
Ulantan's thesis considers the darkness a necessary symmetry to the Traveler in a cosmic balance. In this view, the Traveler's goodness led it to sacrifice for others, and it's up to us to return this goodness by healing the Traveler. The Manas position, or deflationary position, considers the darkness as a technologically sophisticated race, perhaps a post-singularity intelligence. Adherents invoke information theory or contend that the universe is a simulation, allowing advanced intelligence to gain weakly casual powers by bending the rules. The Cataleptic Clause claims that we are intrinsically unable to understand the darkness. In many respects, this belief parallels the Praxic Creed, which suggests that we should stop worrying about the nature of the darkness and focus on resisting and defeating it. And lastly, certain positions often labeled heretical imply the Traveler itself triggered the collapse, or that it knew the darkness was coming for it and hoped to use the solar system as a sacrifice or a proxy army. The Binary Star Cult is one of these notable examples. So, me personally, I find a bunch of those theories interesting because we don't know what it truly is. It's fun to speculate and see what those characters in-game believe it is. So, Ulantan's theory in particular is pretty cool. If he was right about the light being connected across space and time with the whole thing on the moon, is he right about the Traveler's ancient enemy as well? There's also some other connections when you consider quotes from characters such as Zer, who say things like this, your Traveler has a dark mirror, and also I came for the light, perhaps, to understand the light. Within the last month, players discovered a secret quest on Io which opened an anomaly and a secret mission. This of course was to obtain the Whisper of the Worm exotic sniper, but there are tons of secrets coded in this area. First off, you begin in a lost sector titled the Grove of Ulantan. After destroying a taken barrier, you unearth a giant catacomb-like area that will challenge you in various ways trying to prevent you from reaching the end. This could just simply be a location Bungie decided to drop the mission and put it here, but I feel like there's, you know, gotta be some type of connection and it had to be made on purpose, right? It could have been any Lost Sector on Io, but they chose the one with Ulan Tan, probably because of his relation to the light and dark. So next to the A Thousand Words ship and that lore entry, we have a couple of more. First one is the Bond of Symmetry. It says, the light alters us, yet all that we do with our light alters the light. Thus, there is symmetry. And lastly, there's another ship called Symmetry Flight from Destiny 2, and here is its tab. To have light, we must have dark. This is the symmetry of the universe. I propose a simple experiment. Look around. You see light. You see darkness. There could not be one without the other. They are two sides of the same coin. If it is true for these Newtonian echoes, why would it not be true of the purest paracausal forms? Therefore, I conclude, the reason you persecute me is not because of the symmetry. It's because the truth beyond this truth, the truth which most dread. If we could destroy the darkness, but we had to give our light to do so, how many of us would make that trade? So that card right there, in my opinion, the symmetry flight ship from Destiny 2, pretty much rounds up all of Ulantan's theories. There has to be light for there to be dark, there has to be dark for there to be light, and he also questions if we would give up the light if it meant stopping the darkness, which is interesting. Ulantan and his theories became quite a buzz in the city as many guardians began to wonder what the darkness truly was and why they were fighting for the light. Are we on the right side? Are we blindly being led by this Demiurge traveler? It was questions like those that caused the vanguard to label Ulantan as a troublemaker with dangerous ideals. Now that kind of reminds me of the whole Osiris and Toland exiles, but you know, not to that crazy of an extent. But like those characters, he had his own teachings and theories about what was going on out there. Ulan simply questioned what it meant to be a warrior of the light, and that is truly the ultimate mystery. Sometime later, he did die and was buried with a ring in his honor. Replicas of this ring can be seen worn by warlocks as a bond in Destiny 1. And even with all the Whisper mysteries in Destiny 2, I believe his theories will play an important role in the future. Anyway, Guardians, that's all I got for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to some more awesome Destiny 2 news and entertainment. If you'd like to become a voice actor on my game, there's also a Google Doc script down below listed with the available parts. Now, I will keep this page updated so, you know, if a part is taken, I'll remove it and so on, uh, just to keep you aware of what's available. So if you're interested, please email me your audio clips to destinyguides at yahoo.com. 
Now this is a third person zombie campaign shooter and I'm excited to listen to all of your auditions. I will show you guys some, you know, videos and keep you updated with the game as it progresses, but I want to make sure we can get, you know, far enough in development and not have empty promises there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name is Evade and I'll catch you guardians in the next one.